where do you think technology is going in photography and where do you want it to go? I always feel and I always tell my students that if something isn't easy, you're, you're going to stop doing it. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you're doing photography and if you buy a piece of equipment that is incredibly complex to use and set up, mm -hmm. you might do it one or two times. You're not going to do it over and over again. Right. And so because of that, I think that it's, it's critical that, that, uh, that we look for technology that continues to make our jobs easier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have people who tell me that, well, mirrorless cameras are too easy or Sony makes it too easy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's not really photography anymore. That's complete garbage. I mean, if you look at the whole history of our evolution as people, mm -hmm. we've always continued to find ways to make things easier. And then we make them better. Mm -hmm. See, better technology equals, equals better results. Mm -hmm. Because the better technology really unleashes my creativity. I mean, it's true. Because I can be more creative because I'm not spending all this time worrying, fiddling around with this yeah. stupid stuff. Yeah. And so I think truly that um, the, the, the better technology is... is um, definitely where we want to go. I think that in regards to what I'd love to see, um, I mean, ideally, I'd love, I think the thing that holds photographers back is ISO. Mm. It's one of the main reasons why the Sony A7S was such a breakthrough for me mm -hmm. and for so many other photographers. Mm -hmm. I think that having that low light capability is, 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 is liberating. So uh, ISO, I think I would hope, and I'm asking my friends out there in the photographer world to continue to work and push those ISO boundaries. Yeah. Uh, I think that the megapixels, uh, we, do we need more than 36 megapixels? Do we need a 50 megapixel camera? There are a very small sl select amount of people who do. Mm -hmm. The rest of us don't. Mm -hmm. So I, I would hope that the technology would continue to focus on, on those things. Um, I, you know, I think that, again, we live in a social media age, so our cameras being able to communicate directly with social media. Mm -hmm. I think is a fantastic. Sony's doing that more than the others, which is play one of the memories. play memories, which is one of the mm -hmm. things that really attracted me to Sony in the first place. People say to me all the time, "Oh, give me a break! You don't edit your photos. Why do you upload them straight?" I said, "Well, if you know what you're doing, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool, yeah. and your clients can see." I mean, you know why I wanted to do it? Mm -hmm. I would go out and do a workshop, or I would shoot a wedding, and then other people would upload images, and then they would tag me in them. Right. And then by the time I uploaded it a week or two later, my thunder was stolen. Right. I'd be like, oh yeah, we saw Joyce's picture of that. And I'm like, well, that stinks. And you guys got to keep that in mind. We have iPhones and we have Androids and everything else that are, that are constantly sending out pictures and we need to be able to do the same. And we could take a picture out of our professional camera, send it to our phone. It's 10 times better and it's just as fast. I do that all the time. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. So I think furthering that technology. I think the other thing I was talking about with a friend the other day was all the gadgets we used to use, like intervalometers and mm -hmm. remote triggers. Right. And I think, you know, with inside of Sony, I mean, all of the, they're just apps. Right. We live in an app world. I, I love the fact that you can take these apps and I, and I can, me or anyone else can send a message to Sony and hopefully they listen. And you can send something to them and say, hey, you know, if you guys build this into your cameras, even more people will be able to use them. Yeah. And so I think, I think along those lines, I think, um, you know, Sony's been listening, like with their A7 II, they increased the grip on the, on the, mm -hmm. on the camera. They, they made it more weatherproof. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I wish Sony had a, um, kind of like the photic system, I wish they had wireless transceivers built into the flashes. Ah. I think transceivers built into the flashes would be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, so please, Sony, do that for us. <laughs> uh, I think another area is uh, all the flashes should should have a high-speed sync functionality. Right. That's fundamental to be able right. to get portrait uh, aperture settings with off-camera or on-camera flash. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So the, the, the more, and I, I'm pushing, any sponsor I have, I'm push, pushing them into giving us some high-speed sync. And for those, there's not a lar large percentage of the photography world that plays with high-speed sync. If they understood how powerful it is, they would love it. But again, they don't understand it. It's more complex and people, and there's not as many products that support that. So that would be another one. Um, I want my camera to be able to, I don't want my camera to hold me back right. is the main deal. Right. That's the main message I want to send. Don't hold me back. And the main reason I switched was because Nikon and Canon kept just giving us a small dribble of, of improvements. Right. Like I think, I don't know for exact, but 
Nikon had like the D7100, then they came out with the D7200, and I think it went up one megapixel. Mm -hmm. and you're like, really? Mm -hmm. That's what we've been waiting for? I mean, when I did the 10 Reasons, it came along when I had been shooting with the D800, D3, D700 for three, four years, and I was like, where's the next big thing? Right. And it wasn't coming. What's your dream gear, and, and do you already have it, or is it something that doesn't exist yet with you? Sony's getting close to the dream gear. Yeah. Um, I think that... I get asked this question all the time. What, if you had to take just one camera, one body, what would it be? By far, it would be the A7S with the 16 to 35 uh, FE Zeiss lens. Mm. Uh, it gives me functionality, and the, the low light ISO performance on that mm. is phenomenal. Um, so I think, well, okay, you want to ask Dream Gear. Yeah, I Dream think, Gear, go for it. I think if they combine the A7R, the A7 II, and the A7S into one body. That's my Dream Gear. And, and give <laughs> us five, Im five axis image stabilization. Yeah. High meg higher megapixel counts and low light sensitivity, I think it'd be phenomenal. Of course, if you understand sensors, you know, the more megapixels, it's going to be harder with the ISO. Right. So, you so know. That's why you've got two separate. So That's why I have three bodies. Yeah. So, because Sony make that decision to go and have the, the different cameras, to have different cameras that. Just have specialize. very specific needs, and I love that. Yeah. And, and here's the other thing to keep in mind the, the A7S is 2500, right? A7R is like 1800. Mm -hmm. The A7 Mark II is 1700, 1800, something like mm -hmm. that. That's pretty much the cost of like a, like the D4, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I have three cameras that can do very specific things, and I like tools that are more specialized. I don't like an all-around beast. D4S is a great camera, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but it's just an all-around thing. It's it's one size fits all, and I think the f the manufacturers mm -hmm. are feeding us stuff that we don't need. People tell me that all the time with the Sonys. Oh, well, it's, it couldn't stand up in Antarctica. Who shoots in Antarctica? <laughs> Point zero zero one percent of the population. Now, for well, the record, there, there for the record, doing that. but yeah, it's ahead. on my bucket list. Yeah, 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 yeah. But my point is, you don't, and I have an A seventy seven too. If I need to do that, yeah. but my point is, you don't. We need things that fit us, right. rather than the, the camera manufacturers is telling us, this is what we're going to give you. You're going to like it. You're going to buy it. So is that important for, for a, a, a photographer and also a consumer to understand if they're looking at it, one of these three cameras technologies and they're thinking, well, it does this, but it doesn't do this. Are they not understanding uh, in, on some level, because I'm thinking myself, um, that, you know, you there are advantages to, to having the camera specialized. Oh, absolutely. And keep in mind, again, the cameras used to be $5,000. Right. These cameras, except for the A7S, are below $2,000. Right. So, <clears throat> like somebody, sh sh should you ever shoot a woman with an A7R? In my opinion, no. Right. Ever. Right. Why? You're wasting your memory. Mm. You're wasting your, your workflow. Think about, anytime somebody asks me a gear-related question, the answer is always, or the, I always ask, ask with the answer with a question. Mm -hmm. What are you using it for? Mm -hmm. And so I think for these folks, they need to understand what they're using it for. What would you use, shoot a wedding with? Well, I mean, primarily the A7S. Mm -hmm. I mean, the low light sensitivity inside of church mm -hmm. ceremony areas mm -hmm. is fantastic. Um, the it's full frame. You can shoot a wedding ceremony. You can shoot a wedding reception in a reception hall. A lot of natural light. It's fantastic. What about your your urbanography? Yeah, for my urban photography, um, I, it depends. And I really do make this decision. If I'm shooting at a place and it's getting towards dusk, mm -hmm. the A7S goes with me. Interesting. If I'm going into a place and it's I have enough light, it's the A7R. The A7 II is the best all around if somebody's like, I just, I don't know exactly, I'm not specializing in anything, mm -hmm. then the A7 II is fantastic mm -hmm. for that. Because okay. it got a lot in it, and the ISO is pretty good on it. This image stabilization is off the charging, shoot at a sixth of a second. Um, but, and then the 24 megapixels, so it's great. But, uh, you know, that, I mean, there's something, man. When you look at a shot out of that A7R, mm -hmm. holy freak. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I mean, it really is, but you have to have light. So yeah. if I'm shooting a landscape, A7R. If I'm shooting a wedding, it's going to be, A7R is a waste. Got it. Got it. Um, and it also depends if you're going to use it for video purposes. A lot of photographers. That's true. That's a lot of photographers don't look at the codecs when they're buying cameras. Right. They don't even understand what codec is. Right. 
And so, you know, when I tell a photographer, well, you should get the A7S, has XAVCS codec. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, we, uh, YouTube's taken over. It's taken over a long time ago, but for photography, I think photographers are finally waking up to the fact that's a very powerful medium. And I tell photographers to, to market themselves with it. So if you're going to do that, you know why I bought the RX-10 XAVCS codec? I didn't care anything about any of the other specs. Mm -hmm. That was the spec I cared about. Well, on the 28 to 200 Zeiss, that wasn't too bad. But in 2.8. But I guess that that's my point is you guys need to understand anything that you're using it for. That makes a lot of sense. So do you consider yourself a photographer or a videographer or both? That's a great question. I don't know. Um, I consider myself more of a I have a hard time letting go of the photographer label. I've wanted to be that for my whole life. So I'm definitely a photographer, but we're getting in, I, I guess we would, I would say, especially with the projects that we're doing now, we've done a huge project with the circus. Um, we're doing a huge project. We do a huge project every year in Ethiopia. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that I, I don't really like it when photographers, I'll look at their websites and they'll say, storyteller, director, filmmaker, photographer, visual artist. And I'm like, oh, come artisan. on, guys. <laughs> yeah, artisan of imagery, right? Um, I think that... Uh, I would view myself as, as a photographer and a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And working on the filmmaking part. Photography part I got down pretty good, but the filmmaking, we're coming. You watch, we're coming. Do you think that the, the amateur photographer today has to think about video and do they, are they obligated to understand video as much as photography? I don't think you're obligated to know as much, but you'll find that when you understand photography, the video is... Um, not as hard as you as you might might think. Now, learning f what jibs do, and mm -hmm. glide cams, and dollies, and sliders, yeah, there's a little bit of learning curve. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've 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 done that as a team. We've we've learned. Um, <clears throat> do you need to necessarily do do all that? Depends on what your goals are. But I will say that if you want to market yourself, I think video is so powerful. Look at Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, mm -hmm. Vimeo, Vine, all these things that are all video related. Mm -hmm. Pictures don't really go viral. Videos do. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to keep that in mind. But you integrate. You, you, you edit in your pictures into your videos, for example. I, par I do that because I, a lot of photographers are... I'm trying to edit myself here. A lot of photographers, they'll show the video, then they don't show the pictures. Right. And I'm like, really? You so you saw this whole setup, but then you didn't show us what you created? Right. So in other words, I've pretty much lost respect for you as a photographer. Right. So I, th but but yeah, I think that that understanding those both, and again, we live in an age where all of our cameras come with both, both video and photography functionality. Mm -hmm. That's. It, do you find that? Does, I mean, I've heard that um, people worry about. I'm going to show up a, a shoot that's contracted for photography, and I'm going to be expected or pressured into also covering video. Oh, I don't feel that at all. Okay. I don't feel that at all. Is I that mean, a myth amongst us amateurs. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't worry about that. I wouldn't worry about that one bit. I've never even been asked that. Okay. The only time is because we do have a YouTube channel. We do have a yeah. show. Even when they don't contract, I bring my videographer. Right. My videographer is not even but here. But it's a separate camera, separate setup. It is, but they're following me around. But that's the only time there's any sort of confusion where they'll come up and say, hey, Sue, can we get some of this footage? Nope, that's not what it's for. Got it. But see, I have that conversation with my clients ahead of time. I tell them why he, he's coming and what their role is. Um, yeah, but I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, I'm if somebody said to me, hey, did you capture that on video? You'd hear a hearty chuckle. Right. <laughs> like that. Like right. that. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> um, how does an amateur know when to go pro? And how should an amateur know when they're not ready to go pro? You need to have a pro look at your shots. Um, you need to have a... Now, I say that a lot of pros are very mean. And you should stay away from them. They're, they're little bullies. So find, find, a, find somebody who will help you. A mentor. A mentor. Mm -hmm. um, they will be hard to find, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. um, I've always opened my doors, and I'm opening my doors to anybody here. You're welcome to join our intern team. Mm -hmm. um, and Joyce is here today. She started with me four years ago as an intern. Now she's my project director. She's my full-time assistant. Mm -hmm. um, she's amazing. And she's here because she interned four years mm -hmm. ago. And, and to this day, I take as many interns as we can possibly handle. So if you're watching this video and you're in the area, be all, 
you can come. We even have people who, we were just in New York City during a workshop, they say, hey, we want to enter in some of your other workshops and help. They're coming to Mexico, all my other workshops this year, just to come and help. So I always open my door, and I, I think that that's critical. Um, people ask me all the time to look at their images. Mm -hmm. Unless they're part of my intern program, I don't. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there's a main reason for that, and I'll just explain it quickly. I don't do it to be mean. Mm -hmm. But if you want a real critique, mm -hmm. I don't have time to give you a real critique. Mm -hmm. So if I give you a real critique, and it's bam, 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 underexposed, bad composition, this, this, you're like, what a jerk. <laughs> so I don't give uh, the, the real quick critique, right. because if I do, it's going to hurt people's feelings. So I have, have a pro look at your work. Find a mentor. Right. And by all means, get, you know, cut your teeth, get some experience. Right. And I don't care what you have to do to get it, but get it. You want to be an international wedding photographer? Shoot a wedding for free in Australia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Figure it out and stop making excuses for your failures. I can't stand people who are lazy and make excuses for your failures. The sun wasn't cooperating. That the day. sun wasn't cooperating. Figure it out. Right. Find some shade. Turn your back to the sun. Shoot into the sun. Whatever. I mean, just, man, just people just, we live in a, we, we have, you know, that's part of the problem is because of digital photography, we expect everything to be easy. Right. And it's not. You want to you hit the top of your class? You want to be sitting here at a movie studio, which I still can't believe I am? Work hard. Stop making excuses for your failures. People aren't going to like that last sentence. <laughs> it's the truth, though. No, it's true. It's, it's uh, especially as a student, you know. You and people don't want to hear it, but it is the truth. There are, there are students who go to class because they, they want to kind of stroking, you know, their work, and then it doesn't always come. So you, you have to be there to improve and to sort of ask questions. And, and the people who ask the questions say, you know, I don't really understand this. How do I get that? And they're, they're the ones who are more likely to improve. Absolutely. My wife and my assistant will tell you, there's no person harder on their work than me. Mm -hmm. We've improved our videos. Uh, photography, I got down pretty good. But the, the videos, we, we've, this has been an, uh, a journey. And I would look at the videos and I would say, that sucks. That's garbage. That's horrible. And we've been improving and adding more gear and, and techniques and, and practicing. So you've been around the world. You've shot around the world. Are there any countries or cultures that you really connected with while you were doing that? I love Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of a chameleon. I, I really do mix in well with a lot of folks mm -hmm. um, because I don't go around telling them their failures. But, right. but I really do mix in well with a lot of folks. Um, Africa, def I mean, just, it's just such a beautiful uh, place. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I really, geez, man. I love, I love Edinburgh. But I just came from there, so that's jaded. Um, you know, I lived in Korea for for two years. Um, I Japan, I Japan, Japan's beautiful. Um, I absolutely love Japan, and I spent time there. Went to Okinawa. We went to a, a number of different places. So that was that was fantastic. Um, I think that uh, you know it's funny too because as I've come to know the Sony folks, I've met a lot more of. A lot more of the folks from Japan, so that's been awesome. Um, I just, I don't know, Europe. I love exotic, I'll put it this way. I love exotic places. Right. I love places that don't look like America. I love America, and I love mm -hmm. shooting here. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to travel abroad, I want something that's different. Right. So some of the places that haven't resonated with me are places that are more modern and more you know built up I, I love going to old temples buddhist temples or mm -hmm. going to these places that take you back to a thousand or two thousand years mm -hmm. old castles or those are the places that just really get my my engines running i want to wrap it up here um and i want to ask you what to you what is your legacy we kind of approached this topic but ultimately what do you want to be remembered for what do you want your three boys to remember or to, to learn from you and to carry on and and what what is that in your mind uh, so I, I don't know if i've ever been asked that question that's an awesome question um i want them to i always tell my boys never ever quit mm -hmm. never ever quit don't make excuses mm -hmm. for failure um Many people don't know I'm legally handicapped. Are you? I am. I um, had something when I was eight, seven years old. I stopped. I, my ability to walk, my hip socket deteriorated. Oh. 
I have leg Perthes disease. And I wore a brace with a bar in the middle for... Oh, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I wore that for two years. And when I was 11 years old, I had to learn how to walk again. And I'll never forget my mom. She didn't let me have a pity party. Mm. And neither did my dad. And they just said, if you want something in life, you go and get it. Don't make excuses. Mm. And so I would, tell, I would tell them to be... I would tell them or anyone else, what do I want my legacy to be? To be fearless. Mm -hmm. to, um, to, to take risks. Mm -hmm. To... Um, Leave the world with something other than, to leave the world having given more to it than taken away from it. And when I leave this world, which all, all of us will, people will look at my work. They will. Mm -hmm. And if they like it or, love it or don't like it, I can't determine that. Mm -hmm. But they will look at my work. Mm -hmm. And that, I want to leave the world with that. Mm -hmm. I want to leave the world with my, my, my version of beauty. And I want to take people to places that they've never been or will never go. And uh, I want people to, to know that no matter what, I gave it my all. I just, just, there's something, when people say photographers aren't important, because I'll get this, oh, you're just a photographer. Our world is surrounded by imagery. Everything, when, you know, it, it's, it's either video or photography that you look at when you, you know, you and I and everyone in this room was not born not around during World War II. We're taken right back into World War mm -hmm. II when we watch something from Hitler. Or so. It's that imagery, that video that mm -hmm. takes us right back there. I can walk by, yesterday I was in the airport walking through an area and in New York and I saw a picture of Mickey Mantle and it took me right there, right there that picture took me right back to whenever it was that he played. Yeah. And I was there yeah. in that moment. And I think that photography has the ability to do that and, and freeze frame time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we are the historians of time and uh, I, I take that responsibility very seriously. You know, people tell me all the time, I want you to take capture me while I'm beautiful. And people say, well, you know, beauty, you, you're still beautiful when you're old, which we all believe. But, uh, you know, it, people love looking back on their pictures when they were younger. Mm -hmm. I love looking back on my pictures when my boys were younger, and they're mm -hmm. still young. But the point is, you know, photography does that and takes you to places that you, you either A, have gone and will never go again, or B, will never, ever get to go to. And I love that. People tell me all the time on my Facebook page or wherever else, my YouTube channel, I love following your adventures. I love you. You take me to these places. And <laughs> photography is incredibly powerful. And if you don't think that it is, look around. Mm -hmm. Our entire universe, our entire universe is full of pictures. Mm -hmm. And on that last note, so my mom really loves you. And <laughs> oh, thank you. And connects with you. And her question to you is, is... You know, for for her sort of age demographic of, of retirees who have the time, they have the money, they have experience in life, and they have curiosity, and they also have a, a maybe a desire to preserve things. Um, she wants you to make a video for them. Okay. So she wants you to help um, this generation become comfortable with the technology involved you know what's reasonable to sort of adopt oh, cool, yeah. you know because basically when i every time i get a new camera i kind of you know hand off mine to her and then she goes around and tells her friends and this is the intelligentsia mode and this is the superior <laughs> intelligentsia mode and so forth um and she wants me to tell you not to forget um that there is this so, sort of subset out there that um would pick it up and would use it. I'm not talking about the people who've been photographers and right. then retired. And right. Other, you know, I'm talking about people who've never really done anything other than a point and shoot who will pick up, uh, let's say, a Sony RX100, um, you know, and, and go and have more options and they want to sort of learn the functions um, and they what they can do with it. They want to capture things and they want, yeah, their grandkids and themselves and they want to photograph each other and they're not, you know, 22 anymore. But the, but to them, it's meaningful, and they want to know how to do it, and they want someone like you to guide them through that. That is fantastic. So I'd be more than happy to do that. I will do a video specifically for your mom. Okay. Based okay. based entirely mom, on that. We'll, we she that took part. care of your mom. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So this was really awesome. I think I I've learned a ton myself. I think you know anyone who's an amateur photographer, a student of photography someone who wants to whether they want to become a pro or not 
or they're thinking about it or whether they just want to just learn more and take it to the next level i think this you know you've delivered a message that's supportive you've you've shared your secrets you know i that's so important so on behalf of the amateurs in the world i would like to thank you oh you're more than welcome so, um, it's my pleasure and one thing i do want to tell you guys is just for me personally it's an honor to be here um, it's not only an honor to be at Sony Pictures Movie Studios. Yeah. Um, it's an honor that people actually listen to me. Yeah. It really is. And I don't take that lightly. So anything that I can do to help, right. uh, I'm very happy to do so. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. So as, as we always say, guys, um, we appreciate you guys watching this video. We appreciate you guys um, joining us for this chat. Uh, you guys know know uh, what I say, but uh, as always, keep shooting, never give up on your dreams. Thank you, Thank Kelly, you. for doing so much for us today. Yeah. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. Thanks to my crew. Thanks to everyone for helping today. My wife, my uh, assistant Joyce, for my three boys sitting over there uh, making funny faces at me during the, the interview. <laughs> but uh, you really do only have one chance to get it right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. You did the point. <laughs> nice. Gotta pick it up quick. Gotta pick it up. I love the fedora yeah. too. Well, yeah, that's, that's my thing now. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Peop to, people will put people will take a picture and they'll say I'm getting my Jason Lanier on and they'll it'll have a fedora. It's really right. cool. <laughs>